That, that, that's so much better. Okay. <laughs> so I had, had to fix the glare real quick. So, oh my goodness, are you excited? Because today we're making these lamb tacos. Okay. So I've been, I know I've, I've been drawing off at the mouth about it all week long. Because guess what? The lamb is a whole different flavor. So, if you, you know, you got ground chicken, ground turkey. It's, it the how heavy it is on your stomach is kind of about the same as like the ground turkey and ground chicken, but the flavor, oh, best kept secret ever, lamb tacos, all right? So I actually have my lamb here. This is my leftover lamb from when I made these last time, so I've, I've made these before. That's how I know the is. <laughs> And I'm just sucking the corn right now so I can get it to cut it. And um, I'm going to actually rotisserie it in my uh, air fryer. So this is rotisserie at it. I'm going to butter it up, cut it to rotisserie. And then while it's in there getting this spin on, we're going to do, we're going to do the, cheese, uh, the cheese sauce for it. Because the, um, the lamb meat is going to take like, Two seconds to brown it in the pan and season it up. So mine is slightly frozen. So I'm actually um once once I get the corn going, I'm actually going to run in some a little bit of water on it. But it's not it's it's not that frozen. It's just a little a little frost on top. So it'll be alright. So now I'm just going to end up seasoning it, and then by the time we get it in the pan and stuff, it's going to be ripe and ready to go. I'm trying to rinse the rest of the, those little seals. I remember we talked about the biology of corn in my biology class. Those little, uh, these things are actually uh, <laughs> a part of the, <laughs> the seed, like that the corn actually grows from. Go figure. <laughs> but, yeah. So my my corn is a, I'm I'm gonna end up cutting this little piece off so you can just some stuff try to eat my corn before I could eat it but and I mean and you don't have to use uh corn on the cob you can definitely use uh, canned corn but I prefer corn on the cob especially for this type of corn that we're doing because um. I don't know. It just, it just it just tastes better to me because every time I I went to the little street uh the little street cart to get my corn, I always wanted it on the cob. Like nah, give me my corn on the cob. But you know they'll cut it off the cob into a cup for you if you want. But I just felt like I'm getting cheated out of my corn, so I'm like nah, give me the whole cob. All right. And then I was like, well, they gotta be getting this stuff from somewhere. So I actually went. To the store because when I lived in Chicago, I actually lived in a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood, so it wasn't hard for me to find like all the ingredients and stuff they had. But I was like, well, shoot, if I'm buying it from the dude with the cart on the corner, I'm pretty sure I could find it in the store. So I'm guessing that's where he got his his supplies from too. And sure enough, I got all the stuff, the almost the exact brand that they was using, and it tastes even better at home because you can put all of your extra whatever you want on there and you can leave off whatever you want without having to, you know, take all the time explaining, you know, what you want and what you don't want. So when you can just do it yourself and it's that much easier and so much more satisfying for some reason. So I did that and it was good, but it's, it was uh, very high in calories because of the mayo. So, and the butter, the mayo and the butter make raises the calories. So, if you're trying to lose weight, this is not something you want to do on a regular basis because you can absolutely set your goals back. But if you're trying to gain, and I and I just did a live earlier about uh, things you can eat to gain weight. 
in a healthy way, and this is actually one of them. So you want to uh, increase your calories if you're trying to gain weight and build muscle because you need your muscles need calories. So what else are they gonna eat you? <laughs> they will eat you though. <laughs> just just start munching you up if you don't have enough energy for all of the stuff that your body is trying to do. And then, you know, of course, there are, uh, like, butter alternatives, but I prefer butter, butter, like, is this all good? See, this is why I need a cleaver. Next purchase, buy a cleaver. <laughs> and now I'm going to try to break it. Ta-da, you just break it. Put it in the back yet. And this may very well be the most time-consuming part of all of this, but trust me, it's worth it. So all of my other stuff is already pre-prepped except for my uh, my avocado. I'm going to do like a, a quick chunky guacamole. We'll see. And then I'm going to put my basket in it. So this is my... Rotary basket. I'm gonna set this on here. Let's see if I can get it to snap. In place. There we go. Alright. Now I hold it see, so I don't move. Let me get some butter. Butter. And we don't need much. I'm gonna use the cold butter because I got a microwave anyway to melt it. So this this is actually un, this is unsalted butter. Um, I usually only use unsalted butter for the stuff that I bake, but um, it's perfectly uh, sufficient in a case like this because then you can um, instead of having the salt already in the butter, you can get your salt in other ways. So like some seasonings tend to have salt in them, and if you want to season your uh, corn a little bit, you can do that without uh, adding too much salt. So I like to kind of keep both on hand. Oh, nice. I like to keep both on hand so I have that option. And, um, and it's been working out well for me, so I'm happy for it. And then I'm gonna, I have a little bowl. Here, I'll put it in with it. So I can microwave my butter. <laughs> And it's not even going to take 30 seconds for that. So I got my meat here, and I'm going to get a bowl. A little bowl will suffice. And then let me let y'all down here so y'all can see what I'm doing. All right. Oop, don't tip over now. Just stand. Just do what I want to do when I want to do it. Butter's done. <laughs> Okay. It didn't even take 30 seconds. Let me put this over here. So now, and this is, this is actually a drip pan for, for the air fryer. So. Because I'm doing it with chicory style, I'm going to try and just kind of run the butter down it. And so this will be, ooh, that's all I'm in my chicory. And the other side real quick. All right. And the air platter. We ain't gonna set it to nothing because I don't have it for me. <laughs> Let me play this way. All right. Make sure you got room to properly ventilate the top because you know that's messed up, cause it's overheat. So just let it rotate 
Um, and my my air fryer, when I hit rotisserie, well, actually, whenever I turn it on, it automatically excuse me, sets the temperature to 360, which is fine for uh for the corn for what I'm doing. And then I usually just monitor what you know what it looks like if it's you know at the level of uh, doneness and uh, browning and stuff that I I actually want. So let me throw my corn husk and stuff away. That's another reason why I'm, I swear I can't wait till I get a real garden. Because, like, all of these, like, vegetable scraps and stuff, amazing for compost. You keep, like, and it doesn't have to be a big bucket either. You can keep, like, maybe, like, a bathroom garbage pail size uh, with some dirt in it. And then just add your vegetable scraps to it and turn the, um, the dirt and stuff until and it'll, it'll break down, and you know, on its own, keep it covered. And um, you'll end up with your very own compost. So I'm got my me is also good garlic peppercorn. This is like this is one of my favorite ones, the garlic peppercorn and the other thing. But this is what I seasoned. Not my not these tacos. I, my seasoning hand came yet when I did the tacos. But um, put it on my chicken all the time. And um, I actually had some leftovers that I warmed up, and I put some of this on it, and it was like, it made it taste like brand new, it was like fresh all over again. <laughs> and then, got her taco seasoning. I opened it yet. I told her I, I, I didn't have it yet, so this is my first time using that. Oh, it's so good. Now, delicious. And um, the lengths, I don't know if they have different, um, like, leanness. I'm, I don't know if that's the word for it, of lamb meat. But you know how, like, they have the ground beef, and it's, like, 90% or 85, 60, you know, it's like that. But this particular uh, package of lamb meat is 85% um, meat and, you know, 15% fat. So it's actually not a whole lot of fat, which is why I'm seasoning it now. But if it was like a not as lean of meat, then I would cook it first, drain the uh the fat, and then season it. But trust me, the lamb you gonna want the little bit of fat that's in there because it just adds to the flavor. And I think that's probably why I like it more so than um the ground chicken and ground turkey because those tend to have much less fat, and so the flavor is a little bit um different. And um, it tends to not be as robust as what you can get with the lamb. And that could very well be why it's just banging. So put my olive oil in the pan. I always, I always glaze with the olive oil. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I got, I got y'all on the charge right here. So I'm going to bring y'all over here. Let me unplug it. So y'all can see what I'm doing. All right, can you see me? You can see me. All right. Hey, Bob. Mm -hmm. He's still out there walking. Yes, they are. KT was out there with them. I, I thought uh, Sierra was there. I know it's Selena and Sierra. So we're just gonna warm this up in the pan a little bit. It don't have to be like piping hot, you know, in this sizzling. Let me get my spatula ready, okay? And so, and the, the thing is, you definitely want to heat your grease before you add the meat to the pan because the thing is, if the grease isn't hot enough, then it's not gonna uh, really cook the meat. If the meat is gonna end up absorbing it as opposed to just being quiet and, you know, draining out and pulling, you know, out more of the stuff. So um, if you're trying to watch your, your calories and stuff like that, make sure your grease is warm in the pan before you do it. And then 
Also, don't season your meat before you cook it, because then that way you can drain off whatever, you know, oil that you use and whatever fat is in there. So you're actually reducing the calories. But I'm in the process of building more muscle, so I need all my calories. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing mine like this. But like I said, a, li a little bit of meat fat ain't going to hurt nobody. It smells so good, it's so good. Okay, let's turn this down a little bit. The corn looking good on the rotisserie. And um, another uh, variation for this is if you're grilling, you can absolutely grill the corn and then do the um, the cheese the the cheese mixture on grilled corn. And I can only imagine how good that's going to taste with that that grilled mesquite flavor. You know, <laughs> okay? I'm telling you, I, hey, I, I like to eat. Preparing. Yes. Yes. It's, it's pa paired, paired before you even thought about it, all right? <laughs> Put together before you even got to doing it. <laughs> this smells so good. So um, let me try and describe this smell. So like if you like beef tacos, it smells kind of like that, but it has more of a, I don't know, kind of savory um, smell, so um, I don't know how to put it, because like, even the way it smells is, is not quite the same as like ground beef and, and stuff like that and ground, like, especially not, like I said, the ground chicken turkey is pink. Can't hold a candle to the lamb. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. So if you like ground chicken tacos, ground turkey tacos, and you have this recipe, just know that uh, you ain't gonna be able to go back. <laughs> you you not gonna be able to go back. I'm just telling you now. <laughs> so this is so good. And then like I said, like the so if you in the pan so this is like the amount of fat that this had created so i only put like maybe a two teaspoons of olive oil in the pan and so that's the amount of fat that came out of the lamb and it just smells bomb okay and um i'm actually going to leave that in the pan because that's what i'm going to saute all of my other stuff in is that so that's another way to uh you know kind of get the most out of your your meat fats and stuff like that so you're not adding extra fat and um and you can still get the flavor because like that's the whole piece of having meat is because, <laughs> because of the flavor that the the fat from the meat um adds to your dishes otherwise you know we we'd all just be vegan because it just you know it wouldn't be no no purpose to eat meat, but that is one of the main purposes because meat fat makes the world go round. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna get the bowl, fresh and clean bowl, and I'm gonna just start scooping this into there, and then that that's gonna automatically drain out whatever fat I don't need. Like I said, I'm not super picky about it because um, I don't eat a lot of meat like nowadays, mostly just because um, of what I'm trying to accomplish. So I, I have to adjust my diet a little bit for a little while until I'm in a certain groove and I'm going to have to add a few more meats to it, especially red meat, because red meat is like great for 
building muscle and gain weight. So I'm going to turn this off. And then I'm going to get my peppers. And I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it's not the pan. There we go. All right. And my garlic and onions. So I already have my frozen and pre dice. Turn this back on. And pre dice. So this is how much grease and fat and stuff came out of the meat. So I'm actually going to pour some of this off, but I still need some of it for, um, so that's what I'm going to do. So I have just enough to coat the pan. You see it's a little bit, I'm going to pour it a little bit off. I got just enough to coat the pan. It's nice and hot. I'm going to throw my veggies in. And I know people, you know, think of tacos and you only think of like certain stuff, but I would definitely get creative with the uh, with the vegetables and stuff that um that are my tacos because a taco is basically like uh, a Mexican salad or, you know, with cilantro. <laughs> And then I got some pre-diced garlic here. This was the, the bulk garlic that I bought. All I did was just slice it up and freeze it because it was starting to get old. And I didn't want garlic so bad on me. <laughs> so I put garlic in, like, pretty much everything because it's just one of them type of foods that really get your whole body together. It has so many health properties. Like, why not put garlic in it? Um, a lot of people don't really like eating garlic because it does, like, when you sweat, it does come out in your pores, like, all of your fluids and stuff smell, have a garlic type smell. So onions do the same thing. However, your health <laughs> is your responsibility. People don't like the way you smell. Oh, well, they don't have to pay the price for having poor health. So. I think I want to add some onions to this too. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring y'all over here real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I poured the grease into the bowl because I need to get a, let it cool down so I can pour it in a bag and then put it in the garbage because pour animal fat down the drain. It could clog the drain up, but don't do that. <laughs> pour it in the toilet or into a bag and then throw it away. Your plumbing will thank you. And that's part of the reason why animal fats are uh, demonized and, you know, told, you're told to avoid them and things like that. Like, you don't have to completely avoid them, but you definitely want to watch how much you're ingesting because when it... Um, when it gets into your body, it causes artery clogage and all of that stuff. So you want to limit the amount of animal fat they're taking in, which is also why a lot of restaurants and stuff, uh, I think after some act was passed or something like that, they started, you know, going for healthier oils. So they used to fry everything in lard. It tasted delicious, but it was like a breeding ground for diabetes and heart disease. <laughs> And, you know, people, you know, in their 30s and stuff need triple bypasses and stuff like that because they got all types of stuff in the arteries. And, like, it basically looks like grease. So, yes, I'm putting this whole onion up in there. This is actually a salad. But it's an onion family, and it's definitely making me cry. <laughs> Get it back on.
And this is just a bit of cilantro. So, ooh, them onions got me, man, they got me good. And so this is pretty much going to be my topping for my tacos. And then I got my cheeses because I love pepper jack cheese. And, yes, I do eat pepper jack cheese on my tacos. So this is perfect because I like, I like my vegetables, you know, not not completely cooked down with a little, a, a little kick to them, just a little. And now... We're going to make our, here, I'll actually do it on this counter, then I can put the, can put the charger in, so my phone don't down, y'all. <laughs> so we're going to do our cheese, our cheese and mayo dip. What, what would it be called, like a coating? I don't know, for the, for the corn. We're going to do, <laughs> we're going to do the stuff for the corn now, okay? So I'm going to get a bowl. Another bowl. I can see what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. This so we take this bowl. Now, you can use plain mayo. Um, I actually, uh, so this this was the mayo I was planning on using, but it's expired. So <laughs> so I gotta use a miracle whip. Miracle whip is not the same thing as mayo, and I don't I don't usually use it, which is why I have mayo. But you work with what you got when you got it, right? Okay. <laughs> Let me see. So a fourth of a cup. I really be wanting to measure stuff for y'all, but when I like cook in real life, I don't measure nothing. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that looks like enough meat. <laughs> All right. So, uh, actually, I have a fourth cup somewhere. Mm. It's somewhere. It's just not here. Oh, well. So, all right. That. Two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, fourth of a cup. All right. Then another one of my uh situations, I'm gonna call it a situation for now, <laughs> but uh the cheese. So the street corn the, the street corn they use cotija cheese, but if you don't live in a Hispanic neighborhood or near a store that caters to uh Hispanic cuisine, you're gonna be hard pressed to find a type of cheese. But it is a different flavor. So, so it has kind of the same texture as grated Parmesan cheese, but it's a little bit fluffier and the flavor isn't as sharp. So Parmesan cheese has more of a kind of a sharp flavor to it and the cotija cheese is a little bit more um, lighter in flavor and that's kind of why I prefer it to the Parmesan. But like I said, you work with what you got. And for this one, what is the cheese? A half a cup, okay. So I'm gonna need the, I'm gonna need the big, the big stout. <laughs> I'm getting cheese everywhere. So, um, yeah. all right, that's half. It's gonna be half a day. <laughs> Even if it's not, it's half a day. Cause it's. Get up some mayo and stuff down in there. Where's my little, my little, there we go. I made donuts earlier and I ended up using it to scrape out my uh, measuring cup with my donut batter. That was like a whole, almost a whole people on in the bottom of that thing. They're trying to keep me out of my mess. Okay. <laughs> I think we're seasoning this, yeah. So 
now we season it. So I got my smoked paprika. And there are amounts on there, but oof, like I said, I eyeball it. I had to tip my pie. And as soon as I said it, I grabbed it. So just a little bit. And you could even um, just use the same seasoning that you seasoned your tacos with to season this with. And that could work perfectly fine as well. But um, I'm just, you know, I'm just being a little, just a little extra. And so it calls for salt. And so this is why I tell people have both garlic powder and garlic salt. So it calls for salt in the thing. I already have garlic in my uh, my little toppings and stuff. So I'm just going to use the garlic salt because it gives the garlic flavor and um, and it has salt. So two birds and one stone. That's how you get cut to seasoning. <laughs> seasoning time. All right. And then I'm going to use this because this is probably what I'm going to use to spread on the corn, which is looking like it's almost done. I'm going to mix that in there. It's going to be kind of like uh, like wet sand almost. And so, yeah. It's kind of like a sandy type paste. And so then once the corn is done, then we just move it on the corn, and the heat from the corn is going to, oh, my goodness. Y'all don't understand what's going on, how the pan look, okay? And me being extra, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, lime juice on it because I don't really care for the lime on the tacos, but the lime juice really brings together the flavor for the uh, cilantro. And also, um, I have some avocado over here I'm going to slice up. And it's kind of like having, um, a, what they call it, like a decomposed guacamole. So instead of taking the avocado, mashing it up with the lime juice and the cilantro in it, I'm going to have basically all the components of guacamole without actually making guacamole. And that's basically what a decomposed, you know, something or whatever it is. I'm struggling to give me some juice now. Don't do that to me. Why? Okay. And like I said, and this is completely optional. It's definitely to, for flavor. So whatever your taste preference is, stick with that. Because not everybody, you know, likes the little tricky flavors. Oh, and I just thought about it. I got me some uh, a margarita pouch. Frost is frozen in the freezer. This one goes go so good with my tacos and my corn. Oh, my, okay, I got to show y'all the corn. Because, uh, whew, my goodness. It's looking delicious in here. Oh, it's been flipped around. My bad. <laughs> My my stand going haywire. Okay. Oh, I just snapped the leg off. So, ooh, ooh, there it is. So that, my friend, is done. And it was in there for about uh, 23 minutes. So, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to get this to stand up. I'm going to have to lean it on something. I real life just snap the leg off my stand. Okay, there we go. Not really. <laughs> it's windy. So I gotta get something to hold this because this is hot. I've messed around and, and let that little hot wire touch me before. Ooh, be hot. When I say hot, it be hot. Okay. Now I'm going to, hopefully this thing don't tip over. 
All right. Okay. So now we're just going to flatter it on there. Yep. And you gotta do it while the corn is so pretty hot because that's what's gonna melt it down. And if you want this uh tasty creamier, add a little bit more mayo. Um, and if you want more of a tang without adding the lime juice, you can definitely uh, use a little bit of sour cream in it as well. Ooh, that's hot. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> hot, hot, hot. And I'm definitely going to sprinkle some more uh, smoked paprika on top of this. Cause smoked paprika is like the best kept secret. secret. There we go. Get on the corn. You're hunting. It smells just like the street corn. Like, it smells just like it. Even without my cookie hitches. Like, that's probably going to be my next mission. Like, to find. Uh, all the different like ethnic neighborhoods in, in Cleveland so I can get all my food fixed. <laughs> Cause man, the struggle, the struggle. It's really trying not to stay on there, but it's cool. And I'm not opposed to uh scooping and dipping, okay? And uh, some of this might even end up on the taco. <laughs> Some of it might end up on the taco. Need a cool tail. That's like the fourth time I didn't burnt myself on this corn. It is really hot. So be careful, y'all. Be careful with the corn. Mm. I'm gonna just keep this on there because I'm, I'm tired of trying to <laughs> tired of trying to wipe it on there. So I'm just scooping on this so I can get to putting my tacos together. Now, with my tacos, I you got options, okay? So as I mentioned before, you can definitely turn this into nachos if you want, or uh, you can do uh, what else did I say? Nachos, tacos. You can do like a burrito situation. Um, ah, I forgot my black beans. But for the refi, for the refi beans, okay, I have pre cooked beans in the freezer. Mm -hmm. All right. I was forgetting something. So I forgot to take my beans out, as you can see. So they're frozen solid. So I'm not going to be able to show y'all this on here. But I already have my beans cooked, obviously. You can do canned beans or you can do them from scratch like how I did and then just boil them and cook them. And then once you have your beans cooked or soft or out of the can, pour off all of the juice if you're taking it out of the can. Pour all that off. You don't need it. Put a little bit of oil in the pan and then mash the beans while you stir them in the pan with the oil. You want it like two tablespoons of like olive oil and that'll keep it from um, sticking too bad to the pan. And then you just keep mashing it until you get a bean paste and that's your refried beans. I don't usually buy refried beans so they don't make them with black beans and I prefer black beans on my top. So this is gonna be, and then, so these are my options. So I, I have some soft shell tortillas as well, but I have this. This is gluten free, and I actually read the nutrition facts on it. Not too bad. So for two shells, and and it tastes really good. Like it really does have a natural cheese flavor. Like I think I, I actually appreciated it more than the um 
Taco Bell one, because I know you had Doritos Locos Tacos. That that was my jam, but um, I'm they over snack with this. So as you can see, for two shells, so you're eating two tacos. It's only 160 calories, so that's not bad at all. And um, there's not a lot of fat in it. It's very low in sodium. That's the key. It's only 170 milligrams of sodium. Love that fact. And then um, you get, you know, two grams of protein. So I love this as a, a shell. And then also we got a soft tortilla bowl. So I'll probably end up, yeah. So I really picked these up from my mom because she likes the soft shells. But this holds like all the stuff that you need. So perfect. So I'm actually going to use this one for mine. And then I'll stack my tacos up. And I will show y'all my finished product with my avocado slices on the side. Like I, I love me some avocado. I'm gonna I'm gonna make one. This I'm doing this to throw down. That's my mom. <laughs> she smells the lamb. <laughs> Okay. Put that over there. Because I, I will be uh I will be throwing those beans out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was she kept coming by looking like is it done yet? Is it done yet? <laughs> yeah, I told the and it's I'm telling you the lamb, it even has like a whole like different smell to it too. If you haven't tried lamb taco. This is definitely the time to try them. Okay. And so this is from a half a pound of uh, lamb meat. So you can probably get like four, four or five like good tacos out of it, especially if you have like a nice amount of uh, toppings put on it. Which I, I prefer like having more toppings than meat because I kind of like the process of eating the taco more so than the actual taco. <laughs> and sometimes a lot of my uh, toppings end up like not on the top anyway. I'll put some of this on there. And get my cheese, because you gotta have the cheese or it ain't a good taco. It probably is, but I, I, I like cheese a little bit. Like I said, because you want it yourself and you're making it yourself, you can put on it whatever you want on it. So I put pepper jack cheese on it. People are like, oh, no, you got to get the get that cheese or that and the taco. No, it's a taco because I called it a taco. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's what I said. It and then I got my avocado. I'm going to slice it real quick. I mean, this is super, like, perfect. That's the one that ended up with a perfect avocado. What? Look at this. This avocado is beautiful, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what that is. Something else. I'm shell it. And I literally just like have avocado slice on the side of stuff. Now avocado is very high in fat, but it's in the good fat. So if you're if you're on a diet that's limiting fat, uh, avocado isn't for you. So <laughs> so if you if you're if you're limiting fat, this part is not for you. <laughs> but uh, if you're trying to gain weight or build muscle and you want to do it as healthy as possible, avocado is a great source of calories from fat, from healthy fat. So I would definitely uh, find as many ways to add avocado in my diet as I possibly can if I'm trying to put on weight or build muscle or if I'm like now I'm on a slightly more rigorous workout regimen because of my 
uh, kung fu training. So I go like four times a week now. And um, man, look, <laughs> definitely going to end up with a whole new body after that. So um, got to fuel it properly. And um, fat actually makes you feel fuller longer. So make sure you're getting in healthy fat because that's what's going to help curb your appetite and make you feel satisfied, especially when you're eating very clean, if you're eating a lot of fiber, a lot of fresh uh, vegetables and things like that. Um, the fiber also adds to that, that feeling of fullness and that extended, um, I don't know why it was so hard to get the skin off of that all the time. That's usually not a thing. <laughs> And then I just put my avocado slices on there and then I can either eat them on there or with it and oh I'm thinking I had I forgot I had to put the camera back out here. I'll show y'all. I know y'all on my plate now. <laughs> and so this is the finished product. Now you could take more time and like coat the corn better, but like for me, I'm like it's it's good enough for uh I'm about to eat this. <laughs> so this is my lamb taco with my uh my style Mexican corn and my avocado slices. So this is a great, great way to um have like a kind of build your own type meal. And um, like I said, you can get as creative as you want with the toppings for your taco. Um, you can add more vegetables if you want. You can um, do just meat and cheese, like whatever it is, do it, try it out. Let us know. Um, usually I have some salsa already like made because I've been making like mango pineapple salsa. I would definitely try this with, with the mango pineapple salsa because uh, I could just see the lamb meat uh, soaking all the, the fruit juices up and making it bomb. So this is, this is it. This is all I got for y'all today. And I actually added the corn because, like, the tacos are supposed to make. I was like, they got this, like, they're going to be like, that was the show. It was going to be 15 minutes long. So I had to add the corn to give y'all a full show. And it actually made it a nice, uh, full and well-rounded meal. So you could definitely put, like, corn as, like, a, a standard topping and stuff on your tacos. And like I said, if you get it off the cob, canned corn is perfectly fine. The frozen corn, that's good as well. So if you don't want corn on the cob, you have other options. And do the exact same thing. You would just stir in the um the cheese and mayo paste into your uh your smooth corn and um and blend that way. And then you can also add other uh vegetables and stuff to it. And um Selena she had uh did her tacos earlier. You now she gets the recipe, so she did hers and she had Mexican rice with it. So you can definitely do that as a side with with this dish, like it's so versatile, so easy to uh, customize for your, you know, for your needs and your personal taste. And um, like I said, you can turn it into nachos if you have like leftover meat or, you know, whatever. So that is all I got for y'all today. And I'm tired. My back hurts. My hip hurts. Like that's that's the ache <laughs> creeping in on me. So um, that's why I keep I keep me some ginger. So I'm probably gonna have me some ginger tea a little bit later on. And um, this this is about to get eaten right away expeditiously. So thanks for tuning in this wonderful Saturday afternoon. And um, rock truth or nothing at all. <laughs>